La Grèce, c'est mon amour depuis toujours. Lorsque j'avais des problèmes, lors d'un séjour en Grèce, je me rendais à l'Acropole. C'est un lieu sacré, symbolique de la culture européenne. Le sculture del Partenone rappresentano, ne sono convinto e fortunatamente non solo io, il picco più alto della cultura mondiale, perché è l'espressione della civiltà greca all'apice della sua storia che lancia un messaggio di bellezza e di pace al mondo. Le marbre du Partenon comporte la frise, les métopes, les sculptures des frontons de ce monument exceptionnel construit par Phidias au siècle de Périclès, où Périclès a décidé contre l'opinion générale que la culture a la priorité sur les armes. Je suis de ceux qui pensent que c'est le premier film au monde qui a été fait en sculpture. The marbles are an astonishing piece of uh, narrative. It's a story, it's a one single story that goes all around the building. They need to narrate a progression. It is this representation, perhaps, or an evocation of the Panathenaic festival, an event that is critical to the identity of ancient Athens. And so it is the idea of that, that story taking place, that narrative running around the building, that is critical to our understanding, not only of what the marbles mean today, but what they meant in ancient Athens. Ce premier film au monde de 160 mètres, il a été endommagé, coupé en deux. Ever since the Parthenon sculptures were created in the 5th century BC by the master sculptor Phidias, they fell victim through the years to wars and religious intolerance. At one point the temple was converted into a Christian church and later into a mosque after the Ottoman occupation of Greece in the 15th century. In the 17th century, the monument was ignited by Venetian bombardment, as the Ottomans had stored gunpowder inside the building, leading to serious damage. But the Parthenon's marbles were subjected to even greater harm when in 1801, Lord Elgin, British ambassador to the Ottoman port, clearly abused his power at a time when Greece was an occupied country, unable to defend its cultural heritage. On the basis of a permit, or firman, of questionable validity, of which only an Italian translation exists, Lord Elgin obtained permission to draw and make casts of some of the Parthenon marbles, and to carry off some fragments lying on the ground beneath the monument. And yet, gradually, Elgin's men began to remove, in effect, steel, more than half the existing sculptures, slicing off the backs of the blocks of the frieze and dismantling the pediment statues to ship them to Britain. The marble suffered further damage when one of the ships sank. The salvage work nearly bankrupted Elgin, so he was forced to sell the sculptures to the British Parliament, which entrusted them to the British Museum in 1816. This year, 2016, marks the bicentenary of this absurd division of the surviving Parthenon sculptures between a museum in Athens and another in London, 1,500 miles from their natural and historical setting.
look what we discovered, of course it is well known, that the blocks, the blocks that are still in Athens, are 60 centimeters thick or more. However, the ones that are in London, because they were cut in half or in a third by Lord Elgin for transport facilities, are much thinner. In many ways, it's simultaneously architecture, urbanism, and sculpture. It is an architecture that is again part of a, a, a world of culture that is gone, but it's still part of our uh, sensibility. You see the temple in the background and the sculptures right here in the foreground. Uh, this dialogue is what we want to continue, but this time with the actual marbles being reunited. It would be a pity not to be able to reconstitute it in its totality instead of having part of it real and part of it in plaster reproduction. L'argument anglais, c'est que pendant longtemps, les Grecs n'avaient pas où mettre ces monuments. Eh bien, ils ont trouvé la meilleure façon de, les, de leur donner leur valeur totale. The state of the Art Acropolis Museum, designed by the Franco-Swiss architect Bernard Chumi in collaboration with Dimitri Pandemalis, was inaugurated in 2009. Through its use of highly transparent glass panels, it maintains this visual connection between its exhibits and the rock from which they originate. The Parthenon Gallery on the top of the museum is aligned with the Parthenon itself, echoing the temple's dimensions, configuration and orientation. This means that the light coming from the west or the east illuminating the exhibited marbles is exactly similar to that which illuminates the temple itself. Il est frappant de voir des contrastes avec les marbres qui se trouvent au British Museum et les marbres qui sont ici exposés maintenant dans ce grand musée, un des plus beaux du, du monde, musée spécialisé pour l'Acropole. Il n'a que des sculptures de l'Acropole. Eh bien, le British Museum a classé ces monuments dans une galerie obscure. Les marbres vont agresser, ils sont tout près, en face, éclairés par une lumière artificielle. D'où d'ailleurs l'expression et le, en quelque sorte la révolte de Rodin qui en sortant dit « Toutes les lumières électriques n'ont pas la force de les empêcher de rechercher éternellement la douce lumière d'Homère ». Does the British Museum have a moral duty to return these objects? I think it does. I think what we should be thinking of here is the ethics at stake in this issue rather than the legality. It's a case of legitimacy rather than legality. And so I think the moral pressure on the British Museum is extremely important. It's pointing us towards another aspect of this whole issue, which is about ethics in the global world. La Gran Bretagna, a sua volta, è abbeverata di cultura classica e sarebbe ora che capisse che sarebbe a vantaggio suo dell'Europa e del mondo restituire ad Atene, all'Acropoli e a questo magnifico museo quello che fu tolto in modo indecente 200 anni fa. It's often said that if the marbles were returned to Athens, it would harm the British Museum's identity as a universal museum or an encyclopedic museum. On the contrary, I think it would be one of the greatest universal gestures the British Museum could make to return these objects. 
there's no reason why there could be any number of other positive solutions to what might be an immediate, seemingly, absence in the Duveen galleries. We could create new displays, we could have a new relationship with the Greeks to borrow different Greek things. I think this would be an opportunity to show the Universal Museum as it is embodied in the British Museum as a generous museum, a true Universal Museum. Je pense qu'il faut continuer dans cette ligne de pression, d'influence de toutes sortes, mais exclure le recours à la justice. En revanche, la meilleure des solutions serait de trouver un accord avec le gouvernement britannique et avec le, le musée British Museum, accord qui prévoirait le retour des marbres ici où nous sommes actuellement, dans ce beau musée spécialisé. Ce retour serait accompagné des expositions constantes, régulières, à organiser dans le British Museum avec les biens et les monuments dont dispose la Grèce et qui se trouvent très souvent dans la cave des grands musées grecs.